All right, here we go. It's time for another online office hours. Uh, today we've got some questions. Uh, this is, these questions are pretty straightforward. We're kind of dipping our toes into forces. And also, I've got some um, the midterms. Um, so I thought I'd go through midterms quite quickly, um, and then we'll uh, we'll do it. So there's a bunny midterm and a bird midterm. Um, we're gonna try the bird one first, and then the bunny one. I uh, hmm. yeah. Anyway, um, so I'll just read the question and tell you how to answer them all the way through the thing. Shouldn't be too tricky. There's a lot of fun things in this question. All right, and so without further ado, uh, right, so if you don't have your midterm, because maybe you, uh, I don't know, maybe you did the bunny one or the bird one. We're gonna do the bird one first. Bird one's the one that has a bird on the front. Okay, um, just uh, bear with me. Um, maybe I'll upload the midterm sometime, I'm not sure. Okay, so bird midterm first. Um, so if you, uh, if you didn't do this midterm, if you did, get your midterm out. And if you didn't, uh, just hang out for, I don't know, 15 minutes. I'll try not to take long. First question, multiple choice, acceleration and velocity. If I'm traveling towards the east in my car, and I hit the brakes, so a moment later your velocity is smaller, so your acceleration must be that way. <clears throat> uh, which direction is my acceleration vector pointing? Is it to the east, to the west, can't be determined, or I am not accelerating, I'm decelerating? Okay, so the answer is it is to the west. Let's talk about why the other ones are wrong. Uh, to the east, no, it's pointing the other way. Um, towards the west, good. It can't be determined given this information. It can. We talked a lot about this in class. Uh, I'm not accelerating, I'm decelerating. In physics, we only use one word to describe both acceleration and deceleration. That's where it is, acceleration. If you have an acceleration, it means your velocity is changing. Bigger, smaller, doesn't matter. Which two? Forces of motion. If there's only one force pushing on an object and the direction of the force is perpendicular to the direction of the instantaneous velocity, okay, so here's my velocity and here's my force, how will the velocity change? Is it gonna speed up, slow down? Is the direction of the velocity gonna change but not the speed? Or is there no way to know? Now this is pretty fun. The idea here is the acceleration is going to be in that direction. And the acceleration, okay, what would cause it to speed up? It would speed up if the acceleration was pointed in the same direction as the velocity. That's not the case. Why would it slow down? It would slow down if the acceleration is pointed in the opposite direction of the velocity. Not the case. So the answer is the direction of the velocity is gonna change, because that's what acceleration means, velocity changes but it's not gonna speed up or slow down. Answer C, that's the answer. Question, oh wait, what's going on? Question three. Uh, oh, that's the end of the page. Okay, so next one, page, question two, short answers. One, calculus. A dog is running down the sidewalk in a frantic way. There, there's your dog. Uh, its position at time t is equal to zero is x is equal to three, and its velocity as a function of time is six times t squared plus two times t. Find its acceleration as a function of time. So the acceleration is the time derivative of the velocity, which is 12 t plus two. B, determine its position as a function of time. Well, the velocity is the derivative of the position, 
And that means I need to use the inverse power rule to figure out what the answer is. So the way the inverse power rule goes is it goes, okay, six times t. So the way the inverse power rule goes is I look at that number there, two, and I add one to it. So two plus one is three, and then I divide by three. I look at the number here, that's one. So you square it, that's two, divided by two, uh, plus constant. Uh, that constant sometimes, and in this case, we're gonna call it initial position. So this is two t cubed, plus t squared plus three. Boom. Question number two, proportional reasoning. Oh man, proportional reasoning questions are fun. Okay, I'm applying a uniform force to an object. The result is the object's displacement from rest is quadratic with time. So x depends on t squared. That's what displacement being quadratic with time is. So, um, what will the displacement at time t is equal to six be? How do we answer these questions? These uh, both 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 assignments, both exams have uh, proportional reason questions on them. The idea is this: um, if it's proportional in this way, then if I know the displacement at one time, and I know the displacement of another time, and I divide them, that's going to be equal to the time, one time squared, time two all squared. And the deal is that I know some of these values. Okay. Um, so I want to know what delta t, delta x is when delta t, I'll call it t2, is at six. Uh, so I need some other things to compare it with. Um, so, um, x1 is 4, t1 is 3, x2 is question mark, t2 is 6. So 4 over x2 is equal to 3 squared minus 6 squared. So that's um, 9. And that's uh, one over four. So x2 is equal to 16. Just rearrange these and cross multiply. Four over x squared is equal to one over four. Bring the four over here, bring the x over here. Not rocket science. B, at what time will the displacement be? x2 is equal to nine. I wanna know what t2 is. So um, we use the same values here just because it's fine. For nine is equal to T1 is four, no, T1 is three all squared. And I wanna know T2 squared. So I just rearrange this expression. You get T2 all squared is equal to nine, 81 divided by four, take the square root of that and that's nine over two. <clears throat> Next question. <coughs> Long answer. A peregrine falcon is the fastest animal in the world. Let's watch one dive to catch some prey. A falcon starts at rest 200 meters above a mouse and drops free fall for a distance of 176.5 meters. Then they flap their mighty wings in such a way that they stop exactly at ground height so it can wrap their mighty talons around a surprised mouse. I wanna start by drawing the motion diagram. Okay, so A tells us to draw the motion diagram of the thing. And it gives us a box. I know some of you didn't use the box, I don't know why. x is equal to 23.4, and this start here is x is equal to 200 meters. Okay, so a motion diagram, what you wanna draw is the position as it changes with time. You wanna illustrate what kind of motion it is. 
So at the start of it, it's falling at free fall. What does that mean? Its initial velocity is going to be very small, and then it's going to speed up, get farther and farther apart. Right? And then, um, and then once you reach this part, it's going to start slowing down. So the distance it travels every moment is going to get closer and closer together. Looks like that. So gets farther apart. And I guess I got all these velocities. Gets closer together. That in essence was me giving you guys free marks. Not everybody took the free marks. It's like leave a penny, take a penny. Okay, so uh, describe the first stage of the falcon's motion when the bird goes from 200 meter height to 23.4 meters. Starting at x t is equal to zero when the bird is at 200 meters and begins its descent. So, first question. Write the equations of motion for the falcon for the first part of the motion. What's the equation of motion? Equation of motion are essentially these guys. Okay, where we filled in some numbers here. So let's do that. Uh, so in other words, equations are, equations of motion are equations that describe how the motion, what the motion is at each time. So what the position is, what the velocity is. Okay, so um, let's see, what's the initial height? 200 meters. What's the initial velocity? Zero. Uh, what's the acceleration? Minus 9.81 over two t squared, good. What's the initial velocity? Zero. Minus 9.81 times t. There you go, full marks. How much time does it take to reach the point 23.4 meters? So how do we figure that out? The answer is you use, well, one of these equations. Uh, you ask yourself what you know and what you don't know. I don't know what time, but I know what location it is. So I'm gonna use that. 23.4 is equal to 200 minus 9.81 divided by 2t squared. I'm gonna solve this mathematically first. I'm gonna move, um, I'm gonna move this term over yonder. Let's see if I can get a different color here. This continue over yonder, okay? So I subtract 200 by, from both sides. So this is minus 176.6 is equal to minus 9.81 over 2 times t squared. Now I'm going to move this thing over by multiplying and dividing appropriately. Times 2 divided by 9.81. The answer is 36.0 is equal to t squared. And now I'm going to take the square root of both sides. 6 seconds. One, two, three. What's the falcon's velocity at this time? So it says specifically, what's the falcon's velocity when it's 23.4 meters above the mouse? So I can use this equation to figure out what the velocity is. V is equal to minus 9.81 times six. <coughs> falcons go fast, yo. Peregrine falcons, super fast. Okay, C. Please describe the second stage of the falcon's motion with the bird goes from height 23.4 meters, that's this stage of it, to height zero meters, starting with t prime is equal to zero. I'm gonna use a new time coordinate. You don't have to, it's just, it just helps for clarity. Um, and begins its descent. So I wanna know what the acceleration is. Cause you know, at the first height, I guess 23 meters, you're moving really fast. Moving really fast. And then you slow down to a stop at height zero meters. So there's gonna be an acceleration over this because the velocity is changing. How do I figure out what that acceleration is? Um, there's a couple different ways. Um, essentially though, 
The idea here, well, I can use the position as a function. Okay, so wait, hold on. I know that this is going to be a constant acceleration question because of type of question. I, I think I said it. Uh, plus v not t plus a over 2t squared. And v is equal to v naught plus a t. And we want to figure out what this a value is. Um, and so the nice thing here is that I know that I know where I am at these two times. I don't know what time I'm at them, but I know what the velocity is at both at the both times. So it might be nice if I had a, an equation relating the speed to the position. And I can figure that out. I can combine these two algebraically. There's an equation. It might have been on your equation sheet. It looks like this. 2a x final minus x initial is equal to v final squared minus v initial squared. So I'm going to use this equation to figure it out. So it's 2a, the final position is 0, the initial position is 23. Uh, the final velocity is 0. The initial velocity is 58.86 all squared. So this becomes minus 46 times a is equal to minus ugh, some weird number 58.86 all squared. 3464.5. And so the acceleration is going to be plus. 75.3 meters per second squared. <clears throat> Next part of the question, how much time does it take to go from height 200 meters to the ground? How much time does it take to go from 200 meters to the ground? Okay, in other words, there's two parts of the motion, this part and this part. We wanna figure out how much time each of these takes. Uh, well, the first one takes six seconds. Delta T1 is equal to six seconds. I don't know what this time is. But you know, I can figure it out fairly easily. Um, I can use this equation of motion. So V is equal to 58.86. Uh, there's supposed to be a minus sign here. Minus sign. Minus plus 75.3 times t, I want to know when that is equal to zero. And you solve it for, I guess I called it t prime. 58.86 divided by 75.3, 0 0.78 seconds. All right, so it takes six seconds to do this and then 0 0.78 seconds to the second part so the total time six plus 0 0.78 seconds Time to do the last page. Uh, if you just come in, this is the bird midterm. Last page. Question two. Relative motion. A river flows north at three meters per second relative to the tree. I jump into the river in my kayak and I paddle my kayak at five meters per second relative to the water. The river is 100 meters wide. The reference frame I use to describe northward and eastward directions is increasing. In other words, uh, there's my river velocity. Uh, here's my kayak's velocity. V river kayak is equal to five, is equal to three, and then X and Y are like that. All right. If I point my kayak straight east and paddle, what's my kayak's velocity relative to the tree? 
the V of uh, relative to the tree of the kayak is going to be equal to the V of the river kayak plus V tree river. In other words, it's going to have an X component and a Y component. The X component is going to be 5 meters per second. The Y component is going to be 3 meters per second. B. If I paddle straight east, how much time is it going to take to cross the river? Okay. Um... Well, uh, the deal with these questions is that you can solve the systems independently, so your horizontal motion is independent of your vertical motion, or your x direction motion is independent of your y direction motion. So uh, the tree, the river is 100 meters, and vx is 5 meters, so it's going to take t is 20 seconds to cross it. Let's see. If I paddle east and the origin is placed at A, which is the original point of the thing, where will I hit the other side of the river? Um, okay, so A is down here. So, um, my displacement in the x direction is 100 meters. My displacement in the y direction is going to be Vy times T, so that's going to be 60 meters. And so I hit the river at x is equal to 100 meters, y is equal to 60 meters. I draw it on the diagram. What I just said is, it takes me 20 seconds to go this far. In that time, the river has carried me this distance. So this is 3 times, 3 times 20. 60, so I end up here relative to here, which is plus 100 plus 60. D, there's a treasure chest on the opposite bank of the river, straight east. All right. So. This question says that there's a treasure chest. Oh, look, treasure. Cool. If I want to paddle along a straight line from A to B, if I want to travel along a straight line relative to the tree or the treasure chest, what are my components of my velocity? Okay. So the idea here is that V tree kayak is equal to v uh, tree river plus v river kayak okay in other words I want my velocity relative to tree kayak to be straight horizontal or straight east-west um, my velocity of the, so you add vectors tail to tip, VRK, VTR, VTK, right? Um, so uh, my velocity of the river relative to the tree looks like that. So my velocity of the kayak relative to the river has to look like that. In other words, the vertical component of this mixed vector has to be equal to the tree river one. In other words, uh, V river kayak, its Y component has to be equal to minus three. I know the total length. And here, hold on, draw over here. Uh, uh. <clears throat> so 
So this side has to be three. This side, I don't know what it is, that's the VX. This side here though, I know that it is five meters per second. So uh, I use Pythagoras. So VX all squared plus three squared has to get five squared. So VX squared is equal to five squared minus three squared, that's 25 minus nine. So that's 16, Vx has to be plus four meters per second. There's the answer to that question. Well, it took a little bit more time than I'd hoped, but that is the answer to that midterm. <clears throat> so that's the bird midterm. Time to do the bunny midterm. The bunny midterm is the one with the bunny on it. Any midterm questions are as follows. Hold on, I'm drinking water. Where's that water? Oh, oh here it is. All right, question one, multiple choice. If I'm traveling upwards, all right, so if you didn't get the bunny midterm, if you did, get it out. Check your answers. If you didn't, uh, take five. Okay, if I'm traveling towards the east in my car and my acceleration is the same direction as my velocity, am I speeding up or slowing down? So here's my velocity, here's my acceleration. <coughs> A moment later, my velocity is gonna be bigger. So what that means is you're speeding up because your velocity vector is getting bigger. So the answer is A, speeding up two. Considering the diagram below, oh geez, you got a shopping cart. Okay. A shopping cart is being pushed with only one force in the south direction. North, east, okay, it's being pushed south. What can we say for sure based only on this information? So, um, moving south or moving only south north. So moving along the Y direction, accelerating to the south, speeding up. Slow down. Okay, let's go through these. Okay, is it moving south? Do you need to be moving in the direction of the force? No. Do you need to be moving only in the north-south direction? Do you have to be moving kind of parallel to the force? The answer is no, you can move in a different direction, like uh, say projectile motion, right? Throw a ball, the velocity is changing, right? All these have an acceleration that isn't pointing in the direction of motion. Are you speeding up or slowing down? The answer is you don't know. You know that you might be doing one of the two. Your speed might be changing because your velocity is changing. But your velocity means that your velocity vector is changing directions, changing size, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean any of them. So all you know is that it's accelerating south. Next question. Short answer. A dog is running on the sidewalk in a frantic way. Its position at time t is equal to zero is x is equal to two, and its velocity as a function of time is eight times t three plus three times t squared. A, determine its acceleration. We're gonna determine its acceleration using the power rule by taking the derivative of this expression. Eight times three, t squared. Uh, three times two, t to the one. 
Use calculus to determine its position as a function of time. Well, we're given the velocity, and the velocity is the time derivative of the position. So there is some function where I use the power rule to get this one. What's that function? To figure that out, what I do is I look at these numbers. And I add one to both. So 3 plus 1 is 4, and then I divide by 4. 2 plus 1 is 3, so I write 3 and then divide by 3. So O right plus x0. So this is 2t4 plus t3 plus x0. And I have to use the little bit of initial information I've given to figure out what this value is here. 2t4 plus t3 plus I'm applying a uniform force to the object. The result is the object's displacement from rest is quadratic with time. Delta x is related to t squared. And that gives me some initial data. t is equal to 0, delta x is 0, t2, delta x2. So what's the displacement at time t is equal to 4? Well, the trick to doing this is if you know these relationships, what it means is if I know x1 at one time, t1 at a certain time, if I know x2 at a different time and t2 at a different time, those values are going to be related like this. Okay. So I'm going to use the data I'm given to figure out the data I want to know. So x1 is equal to 2 and t1 is equal to 2, and x2 is equal to question mark, and t2 is equal to 4. So I'm going to put them into this equation and see what I get out. 2 over x2 is equal to 2 squared divided by 4, all squared, which gives you At what time will the displacement be x2 is equal to 9? Question mark. Okay, I'm going to do it again, only I don't know what t2 is this time. So uh, x1 is 2, t2, x2 is 9, uh, t1 is 2 squared, t2 squared. Now I'm going to solve this, and it becomes t2 all squared is equal to... <clears throat> 18, and then, really 18, is that right? I guess so. Square root of 18, 4.24 seconds. Looks right. All right, now the word problem. Hey, it's a dick dick. Dick dicks are the best. They're like little baby deer, only they're little baby deer forever. Just to, and they have enormous eyes, tiny little mouths, and little bitty antlers. Okay, that's what a dick dick looks like. Look them up. You're a university student. You have lots of time to watch David Attenborough movies. Okay, so it's going to jump over a creek. 30 centimeters tall. Yeah, it's the size of a ruler. You could... Put one in your purse. Okay, so uh, it's going to jump over a creek, and the creek is 10 meters wide. If the dick dick we are watching jumps from the edge of the creek with a speed of 10 meters per second, all right, you know what? I'm going to bust this up 
So that's 10 meters per second. That's its initial velocity <coughs> at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. I want to know the components of the initial velocity vector are. So that's this one and this one. I find them using trigonometry. 10 times sine of 30, 10 times cosine of 30. So Vy is equal to plus 5, Vx is equal to 8.66 meters per second, meters per second. Okay, so B, the max height. The deal is that uh, you evaluate the x and the y parts of the motion independently of one another. So when you're at your maximum height, vy is going to be equal to zero. And vx is going to be exactly the same. So that's your instantaneous velocity. C, what is it, what's the acceleration when it's at its maximum height? Acceleration is the same as it always is. Acceleration in the x direction is zero. Acceleration in the y direction is minus 9.81 meters per second squared. How much time does it take for the dick 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 to go from its initial position to the time of the maximum height? Okay, so you're going from your initial position to the maximum height. I want to know how much time it takes, and the deal is I can use the equation uh, Vy is equal to my initial velocity, 5, minus Vy0 minus Ay times t. 9.81 times t. Set this equal to 0, because I know that at the time I'm interested in, at this time, my y component of the velocity is 0 and solve this equation. Five point one seconds. All right. Question E. How much time does he spend in the air before it lands? You know something about projectile motion, which is projectile motion is perfectly symmetric. And one aspect of that is it takes the same amount of time to go from here to here. Uh, 5.1, that's not right. 5 divided by 9.81. Yeah, it's 0 0.51 seconds. So it takes 0 0.51 seconds to go from here to here, and then it, ta it must then take 0 0.51 seconds to get down. So the total t is equal to 0 0.51 plus 0 0.51. 1.02 seconds. So that's how long it took them to reach the original height. Did he make it across the creek? How do you figure out if he made it across this creek? You know something about his motion in the y direction. You know that his motion in the x direction, sorry, his motion in the x direction is a constant velocity. So his delta x, his change in position, is going to be vx times t. So that's going to be 8.66 times 1.02. 8.66 times 1.02, that's 8.83 meters. Uh, does this get over the creek? How wide is the creek again? The creek is 10 meters. That means that our loving friend, the Dick Dick, our friend, the Dick Dick here is unfortunately underwater.
You didn't make it across the creek. You're underwater, buddy. Okay. Uh, next question. If the dick dick jumped at angle 45 degrees, would they make it? Um, well, 10 meters per second. You just kind of repeat the calculation, 45 degrees. Doing this again takes uh, two seconds, 10 divided by square root two. So this is 7.07 .07 meters per second. This is 7.07 .07 meters per second. Cool. Um, so uh, how much time are you in the air for? We can use the X, X, no, Y. Y, Y, T. Just like before, we can use the acceleration. We know that when it reaches, its initial velocity is, okay, its initial velocity is 7.07 .07 minus 9.81 times T. And we know that when it reaches the other bank, if it does, its velocity is going to be upside down. And so you can solve this for T. Oh, look, this time you're staying in the air for 1.44 seconds. That's much longer. And my position is a function of time along the x-axis. It's going to look like that. So my final position is going to be 7.07 .07 times 1.44. Ten point two meters. Oh, if only you jumped at a forty-five degree angle, you could have made it across the creek. Not that all that work on the last bit was worth two points. So, if you didn't get it, don't feel bad. Okay, relative motion. Two trains face each other. There's Percy and Thomas. Hundred kilometer long track. So this one's here. And this one's here. Percy Thomas. Thomas starts in the west, travels 70 kilometers an hour to the east. No, that's a two. 70 kilometers per hour. Percy starts in the east, travels 80 kilometers an hour. Tree is halfway down. Hello, I'm a tree. Oh, interesting enough, these velocities I've given you are relative to the tree. Um, uh, okay. So, uh, Jeez. V tree Thomas is equal to plus 70 kilometers per hour. V tree Percy minus 80 kilometers an hour. B. What's Thomas's velocity relative to Percy? V Percy Thomas is equal to V V tree Thomas minus V Percy, no, V tree Percy. Seventy minus minus eighty. So Percy sees Thomas coming to the right eastwards at one hundred and fifty kilometers an hour. When will the collide trains collide? Uh, they'll collide when they've traveled a hundred kilometers now. One fifty. 
So delta t is equal to 100 divided by 150. Hooray, this is two over three hours. So that's 0 0.666 hours. D, where will they collide? Um, well, one way to talk about where they collide is to go <coughs> uh, position of Percy relative to the tree is Percy starts off 50 kilometers and his velocity is 80 times T. So the final position is 50 minus 80 times 0 0.666. minus 3.28 meters. So they're gonna collide just a little bit here. And that makes sense. Percy's traveling a little bit faster than Thomas is. So the distance that Percy travels in the same time as Thomas travels is gonna be slightly bigger. All right, that's it for the midterms. Put these back. Get out your question books. It's time to do some questions. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> All right, so turn to page 167, and we're going to do a bunch of questions. So first question is question seven. Two angled ropes used to support a crate can withstand a maximum tension of 150 newtons before they break. What's the largest mass the ropes can support? Here's the diagram. Here's one rope, and that's 30 degrees. Here's another rope. It's 70 degrees. And then you got your mass. How do you tackle this question? First, you draw a free body diagram. Okay, hold on. I've been trying to teach you to do these things systematically. So we want to know what the mass is. But systematically speaking, um, you start with the acceleration. What do you want the acceleration of the box to be? Zero. You want the box to sit still. So its initial velocity is zero, and the velocity stays zero forever. That means the net force in the x direction is zero and the net force in the y direction is zero. Okay. Now uh, we draw a free body diagram. What are the forces on it? Well there's weight. What other forces are there? Uh, there's a tension force going this way. I'll call this one T1. And a tension force going this way. T2, okay, and you know that this is 30 degrees, and you know that this is 70 degrees, okay? So, there's a couple different ways I can tackle this, uh, trigonometrically speaking, um, but the next step is to write out all of the components of the force. minus gm, uh, tension one, its force in the x direction is going to be, we'll call it, um, give me a letter, b, no, a, uh, how about, how about little script t1, how about that, well, it looks like time, mm, tau, we'll use tau, tau. Uh, tau 1 cosine of 70, uh, tension vector 2, or 1y is equal to tau 1. So the tension vector has magnitude, magnitude of the tension. 
uh, cos sine of 70. Um, second vector in the x direction, it's going in the minus x direction. See, look, minus x direction. Um, so I'm going to call this tau 2 minus cosine of 30. In the y direction, tau 2 sine of 30. Uh, let me rewrite these just as numbers so I don't have to keep copying the cos and the sine. So cosine of 70 is equal to, so this is 0 0.342 times tau 1. 0 0.939 times tau 2. No, 1. Minus 0 0.866 tau 2. 0 0.5 tau 1. All right. So the next step is now to put all these together. So in the x direction, the net force is 0. And now I'm going to add up each of these terms in the x directions. And in the y direction, at 0 is equal to minus gm plus 0 0.939 times tau 1 plus 0 0.5 tau. It's supposed to be a 2. All right, and now I start solving them. Um, so give me a better color, this one. That one. I could solve that one pretty fast, quickly in terms of tau 1. Tau 1 is equal to 0 0.866 divided by 0 0.342. 2.53 times tau 2. And then what do I do? I plug this one into this one and keep going. But before I go on, I want to I want to talk to you about something. Uh, the question here is that what the maximum mass is, and it gives us the breaking point of the rope. So it gives us the maximum tension in the ropes. It says the maximum tension is 1,500 newtons. Which rope do you think? So because these aren't the same angle, the ropes aren't necessarily pulling the same amount. It's like when you try to move with your friends and you're like, hey, carry this box. And you carry one end and they carry the other end, but you're carrying 90% of the weight and they're only carrying 10% of the weight. Right, it's like that. So well, you don't move with your friends. Anyway, uh, so because they're at different angles, they're carry carrying different amounts of tension. So one question we can ask is, which one has more tension in it? And this is the, uh, this is the relationship that tells us the answer to that. Um, because of the x components, this one's pulling to the left, this one's pulling to the y, because those have to be in, sorry, they're both, this one's pulling to the left, this one's pulling to the right, because they're in balance, uh, it means that the, uh, this indicates some, mm, the tension's going to be different amounts. Okay, so, which one's going to be bigger? Um, if tau 2 is equal to the max, then tau 1 is going to be thirty-seven nine five, which is way too heavy. So uh, this means that tau 1 is going to be at the max, and tau 2 is going to be uh, Two point five three. So that's five point five. Bleh. 
592.9 units. All right. Uh, so we know that tau 1 is equal to 1500. Tau 2 is equal to 592, well, 593. But this is the maximum that the system can carry. Plug them into this. 0 minus 9.81 times unit mass. All right, T1, 1500 times 0 0.939 is equal to 1409 newtons. 0.5 times 593, 296.5 newtons. So the mass is 174 kilograms. That's the maximum weight the thing can fall, or the maximum mass it can hold. Okay. Next question, 16. 16 goes like this. An astronaut's weight on Earth is 800 Newtons. What's his weight on Mars, where G is equal to 3.76? All right, so your weight's going to be mass times gravity. On Earth, it's 800 mass. 9.81, so his mass on Mars, it's gonna be mass times 3.76. Uh, so I'm gonna use this equation to figure out what the mass is and plug that in there. A 1.5 kilograms times 3.76. So his weight on Mars is going to be 306.6 newtons. Hey, look how high you can jump. Oh, Martian astronaut, no matter how high you jump, you can never get home. Sorry. You'll never feel the air on your skin, the wind on your skin ever again. You've doomed yourself to a life of living inside cages, and yet we all envy you for your freedom. Nobody is as free as the Martian astronaut. <laughs> this guy's jumping. Sorry, Martian astronaut, you'll have to jump much higher to reach the Earth. Okay, question 23. Oh, geez. Is this thing updating? I think it is. I think we're doing okay. Yeah, we're good. Okay, question 23. It goes like this. A 0.6 kilogram bullfrog is sitting at rest on a level log 
How large is the normal force on the, of the log on the bullfrog? A second six kilogram bullfrog on a log is tilted 30 degrees above the horizontal. How large is the normal force on the log for this bullfrog? Here's your log. Here's your frog. Here's your free body diagram. Acceleration zero, F net zero. The weight is minus 9.81 times 0 0.6. This is minus 5.88, so the normal force must balance, so the normal force is plus 5.88 newtons. B, a second bullfrog is sitting on a log, tilted. Here's that frog. I want to find the normal force for this one. All right, so the trick to doing it this way is to draw your x and y axes like that, and then wait, and then the normal force points in that direction. It's probably not gonna be as big as it was originally. There's an x, and there's the y. All right, and so acceleration in the x direction is, I don't know, zero. There's probably a friction force on here. But we're interested in the acceleration in the y direction. That's the one we're interested in to answer this problem. The reason is the bullfrog doesn't want to fall through the thing, or rather the tree doesn't want the bullfrog to pass through it. The tree has opinions. So it's acceleration in the y direction, which is this direction, has got to be zero. So F net in the y direction has to be zero. Uh, the normal force is purely in the y direction. Fortunately, the, uh, the weight is not. The weight has x components and the weight has y components. Like I said, to do this question, we don't really care about what the x component's doing, but we do need to break the weight down into its component vectors. And the method to do this, we showed you in class, is to recognize that this angle is going to be the same as the angle of the log to the horizontal. So this one's 9.81 times 0 0.6 times cosine of 30. And this one's 9.81 times 0 0.6 times sine of 30. So the uh, y component, that's this component, is this guy. So it's going to be minus 5.09. Uh, the x component, I'll just write it down, 9.81 times 0.6 times sine of 30. This is 2.94 newtons, newtons. All right, now it's time to put this piece of information, this piece, and this piece together. Zero is equal to n minus 5.09, so n is equal to 5.09 newtons. There we go. That's question 23. Oh, just one more left, hooray. Question 46. Question 46. A 50 kilogram box hangs from a rope. What's the tension in the rope if A and B? Let's start by drawing it. Here's our rope. Here's our box. All right, so uh, doing this question, there's two parts of the question, so I'm going to do this twice, once for each of it. Okay, so A moves upwards with a steady velocity 5.0 meters per second. All right, so oh, 
Okay, so if it's moving at a steady velocity, the velocity is not changing. If the velocity is not changing, it means the acceleration is zero. B. F net has to be zero because the acceleration is zero. C, let's draw forces. <coughs> Box is gonna feel the weight and it's gonna feel a tension force pulling it up. Weight in the x direction is zero. Weight in the y direction is <coughs> 9.81 times 50. 49.0.5 newtons minus. Uh, the tension force in the x direction is zero. The tension force in the y direction is, I don't know what it is. Now I put this together. The idea here is information of the motion gives us context tool information about velocity stuff. Okay, I mean, the information about how the object's moving tells you a little bit about the forces. So, F net, the y direction is zero, and that's equal to minus 490.5 plus t. So t has to equal 490.5 newtons. Part B. What if, wait, hold on, which question is this? 46. The box has a velocity Vy is equal to five meters per second. It's slowing down. So as velocity is going up, if you're slowing down, which direction is your acceleration gonna be? If you're slowing down, the acceleration is in the opposite direction of your velocity. They're giving me a number for the acceleration. They're saying it's five meters per second squared. So my acceleration must be minus five meters per second squared. Step one of this, write the acceleration. I'm just gonna stick with the y components of this just because there's no x components, I'm wasting time. A y is equal to minus five. B, f net in the y direction. What is that? That's gonna be mass times the acceleration. So it's gonna be minus five times 50, minus 250 Newtons. Still only two forces. There's the weight, there's always the weight. And then there's the tension force. The idea is we essentially look at the system and we say, what's touching it? There's a rope touching it. So there's providing a tension force. Tension force in the Y direction is, I don't know what it is, T. Tension force in, or the weight in the y direction is minus 490.5 newtons. All right, time to put it together. That's minus 250 is equal to T minus 490.5. So T is equal to. Two forty point five newtons. Which one's stronger, this one or this one? This one's stronger. This one's slowing down, so it's accelerating downwards. So gravity is winning the force fight. Okay, uh, nobody has anything to say in the chat, so I'm gonna call it a night. It's been a pleasure doing business with you everybody and well pleasure's all mine i'll see you later stay out of trouble do your homework get lots of sleep have fun see ya